And welcome again to the Study Bible Bible Study, where we study the Bible with Study Bibles. And Revelation 17, 14 tells us, And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them. For he is Lord of Lords, he is King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. God bless and amen. And welcome back to our Timothy study number 17 or AB 18. Now, 1 Chronicles 29 tells us, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever, from eternity to eternity. Now thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and all that is in earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all thy kingship is yours. Now both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thy hand is the power and the might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thee in thy glorious name. God bless and amen. Okay, let's so hop back into this. Now to requit their parents is payment. Now, to requit their parents is payment of children's debt to those to whom they've derived their existence from and whom they've received support, care, and training. Now, the logic is this. They supported you when you were weak and unable to help yourself. Now, you ought to support them in their needy condition. Honor thy mother and thy father. The fifth commandment, I believe. Or maybe in Catholic Bibles it might be the fourth commandment, but it's on the, it's on the Decalogue. It's on the top ten. The top ten board of the, <laughs> the the family the family unit, not the family feud. Or I guess it could be a family feud question. But okay, where were we? Now she continueth in supplication and prayers night and day. Because her heart, her whole heart, God, on whom her heart is fixed. Now her heavenly mind mindedness resembles that of pious Anna, pious Anna. And her devotion to God lifts her above the desolation of widowhood. There is also an opposite type of widow against whom the church must be warned. She giveth herself to pleasure. She may not abandon herself to grossly criminal pleasures, but she lives in luxury, pampering her body more desirable than cultivating her mind. Beware of the woman who maketh the beddeth, smelleth nicest. Nicer. Smelleth well. It's a well smelling situation, as King Solomon would say. Now, therefore, her life is worthless to anyone that that way of life may appear to her to be a living, but it is deceitful, for she is dead through her trespasses and her sins. Such living does not fulfill any of life's true ends. Therefore she is considered as dead while she liveth. These things concerning the widows were to be continually commanded so that the whole church and its officers and all the members may be without reproach. The church must provide the desolate. The family must support its own needy ones. And the widows must conduct themselves blamelessly before God and man. Now, home responsibilities are such vital part of the Christian ethic that if any provideth not for his own, and specifically his own household, it is considered that he hath denied the faith. Now, the Christian faith includes the law of love, which obligates one to provide the necessities of life for his own pure relative, for his own poor. I'm sure they're pure too, but these are poor relatives, not the pure ones, but. I'm sure they're pure. 
Now, and those who live in his own family are under his care. Now, failure to do this is utterly inconsistent with the principles of Christianity, which teach to love and teach benevolence towards all men. And if true Christianity is not manifested in the family circle, it will not be found elsewhere. The test of character is to be found in the family relationships rather than those which are ecclesiastical and it is in the home first that Christ's disciples are to adorn the doctrine of God, their Savior. Now one who has accepted the privileges of the Christian discipleship and later rejects obligations is declared to be worse than an unbeliever. The heathen among whom Christians lived believed in and practiced family affection. Even the heathens took care of their own families. Come on, guys. Now, their moralists taught that one should care for his needy relatives. Jesus taught that the demonstration of Christian virtue should be superior to those of non-Christians. Now, Christians are not only expected to do more than others, but are able to do more than others. They have the example of Jesus to inspire them and the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost to enlarge their actions. For you are indwelt with the Holy Spirit, right? Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth within you? For if any man violate this temple, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which ye are. Now, widows who serve the church. Now, let none be enrolled as a widow to under three score years old, having been the wife of one man, well reported for good works, if she had brought up children, if she hath used hospitality to strangers, if she had washed the saints' feet, if she had relieved the afflicted, if she hath diligently followed every good work. Now this portion of the instruction concerning the enrolling of widows has been variously interpreted. Some take it to teach that in the early Christian church there was an ecclesiastical order of widows whose work was similar to that of deaconesses. Others say that, others say that this refers to only, only two. Now, a role of widows who legitimately could be regarded as entitled to the maintenance by the church, the moral qualifications are only that which would be prescribed if he meant to secure that whose retrieve support from the church should be duty limited in numbers and altogether worthy of such benefit. Now, the role and the qualifications outlined before, outlined below, show that this matter of charity was not only indiscriminate but was organized and governed by wisdom. Now the role now the role and the qualifications outlined below show that this matter of charity was not indiscriminate but was organized and governed by wisdom. Let none be enrolled under three score years old. Sixty years would be a reasonable age in that day. Now, if one were under 60 and desolate, she would not be denied assistance, but for up to that age, the widow could be expected to provide for herself. Now, after 60, there would be a little likelihood of her remarriage. The requirement that she be the wife of one man ensures a reputation of chastity in the marriage relationship, but not a concubine, nor an adulteress. It's interesting that they pick the age of 60 and that our, our retirement age in, well, at least Canada is, what is it, 62, 65, 67? It's, I wonder where they kind of came up with that number when they came up with uh, the idea of retirement. I wonder who was reading what. Now, the negative goodness is not enough that she must have been active, well reported for good works, but a variety of home virtues and works of benevolence. Her record, com her record commends her as deserving her mother, 
her motherliness is reflected that she hath brought up children, and this does not require that she bore them, but when she was entrusted with the mental and spiritual instruction of the children, her own or other children, she carefully trained them in Christian virtues. Her humble service is reflected by the showing of hospitality to strangers. A necessity for Christians of that day, but a Christian grace for any time that that the washed the saints feet. Now this service, now this service necessitated by one of this by by the use of sandals along with dusty roads and usually performed by a household servant or by the pious woman who were willing to render their menial service. Our Lord himself once did this as a lesson to his followers. A widow who received support from the church must also diligently follow every good work. That's interesting, isn't it? A widow who receives support from the church must have diligently followed every good work. Because when Christ left all the apostles, they technically became the widows, right? Because they were the husbandmen, in a sense. I'm sure somebody could exposit stuff like that a lot better than that sentence I just put out there. But Now, neglecting no opportunity for service, however humble by these things, she would have provided herself to be a servant of the servants of God. Now, widows who are younger... But the younger widows refuse, for when they have waxed wanton against Christ, they desire to marry, having condemnation because they have rejected their first pledge, and withal learn also to be idle, going about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers, and also busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. I desire, therefore, that the younger widows marry, bear children, rule the households, and give no occasion to the adversary for reveling, for already some have turned aside after Satan. Idle hands, right? Idle hands are never a good thing. Yeah, in Timothy 6.11, But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life, for unto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now faith is the conviction of what you hold to as the truth or the knowing of God. Faith is the essential component of Christianity. Faith is the knowing that Jesus is the Christ and through him and only him can you lay hold of eternal life through him and him alone is salvation in the kingdom of God faith is the divine knowledge or being or the revealing to faith is the rock upon which we lay our heads faith captivates our hearts and feeds our souls faith solidifies our relationship with God faith confirms us faith comforts us faith delivers us faith in Jesus Christ and Christ alone and a word from our sponsor the only thing that ever evolved from evolution is more and more confusion and Revelation 17, 14 tells us, And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them. For he is, Lord of lords, he is, King of kings. And they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And God bless and amen. Our Timothy study.